Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Sitra Podcast, your forward operation space for all things military and historical wargaming. I am your host today, Ariskini Jim, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of hobbycraft using the T62M Tank Company box from Battlefront. Now, we're not really going to be using the T62M option that comes with this kit. This kit comes with several different options. We're going to be using the base T62 because I want to get my Syrians and Egyptians ready for some 50th anniversary commemorative Yom Kippur battles that we have coming up. Alrighty, so taking a look at the outside of the box, of course it says T62M on the box, which you can certainly build. Here are the instructions for it. T62M is going to be the more modern upgrade of the T62 tank you would have seen with Warsaw Pact Forces in Europe, say in the 70s, maybe even a few lingering units in the early 80s. But we're building the T62 base model you would have seen with Egyptian and Syrian armies in the Yom Kippur War. So it looks like we uh, start off with a small mini sprue of commanders. Yes, the plastic has been taken off the box before I started this video. I did want to check something before I turned the camera on. So, okay, you guys got me on that one. But as we often see with a Battlefront kits, uh, each tank comes on two smaller sprues. So five tanks in the sprue, you get, uh, or five tanks in the box, you get uh, 10 sprues. And here's the thing I really wanted to check. You do get turrets for both versions of the T-62. There on the left you see the more modern T-62M with the additional turret facings. Again, what we're going to be building is the T-62 base model and the turret for that is included over there on the left hand side of the sprue. Elsewhere on the sprue, it looks like we have a couple different options there for the front of your hull and we've also got a part for the back of the hull back by the engine deck. Over here on this other sprue, well, obviously we have the main deck of the tank. Looks like we've got two different options for the side skirts, the more modern ones up top and the basic ones that we're going to be using um, here on this sprue in front of you. We've got the basic suspension. We can see sort of the ancestry in the design or the tank DNA, if you will. That goes back from the T-62, back through the T-55, T-54, the T-44, and clear back to the T-34, if you, uh, if you want to be honest. We also got some cards. Now, I usually play Seven Days to the River Rhine, so we probably won't be using these cards, but just so everyone knows, yeah, great high-quality Battlefront cards come with a kit. Alrighty, let's say we go ahead and get this kit started. First of all, safety first, brand new blade in my big thick handled knife, well suited to my big clumsy bear paw hands, and we'll start cutting parts out of the sprue. Now as we often see with Battlefront Plastics, the joint points between the sprue and the part are pretty well designed, they won't have that big of an impact on your model. Nevertheless, once you cut the part out of the sprue, you will want to do a little bit of cleaning. All right, so here are all the parts cut out of the sprue. We've laid them out generally where they go and we can start going through them. So we have the base hull, we have the uh, track and the wheel assemblies there. One thing I like about this is where the sprue joined the part, you do have those little flash points there. Those are designed to where they will be inside the model. In other words, once you put the model together, you will practically never ever see these even after you clean and after you paint. So it's little touches like that that I really appreciate with the more recent Battlefront plastic kits that are available. And like we keep saying, we are building the original T-62 variant, which has the much more basic looking round turret. We have the floor of the turret and where it joins into the hull, and we've got the peg that allows the turret to rotate. Because we are building the old school original T-62, we are using the World War II era Dushka 12.7mm or 50 caliber heavy machine gun. The kit does have the more modern NSV 12.7mm if you're building the T-62M. Next we come to the main armament. This is a U-5TS 115mm main gun. Yes, I will be drilling out the muzzle of this gun a little bit later. 
So 115 millimeter is kind of a weird caliber. I don't think the Soviets used a 115 on any of their other tank designs during the Cold War period. It was the first smooth bore tank gun, and for its time, it was actually considered pretty deadly. I got the snorkel kit, which I will be using, and then there are some parts that we won't be using, like the more modern turret we've looked at. We've also got the more modern option for the uh, side skirts that we won't be using on this particular kit, the more modern NSV 12.7 machine gun. And we won't be using the rangefinder. This is uh, a retrofitted rangefinder put on the T62M. I tell you what, I wish I had these during my Desert Storm project. I had some Chinese Type 69s I really could have used those on. Won't be using the ditching log. And then we come to the external fuel tanks. Now, I often don't use these um, because these are usually either drained first or just outright ejected off the tank before actual combat really starts. One cool thing I do want to uh, note about this on the kit, though, is that both fuel kits are a single piece. Sometimes these are provided to you as two different pieces and you have a hell of a time getting them on there where they look like they're equal or level. Here, it's all one part for easy installation. So, the first thing we're going to do when it comes to actually assembling this kit is put together the hull. We've got the hull base and the track assemblies that go on either side. One thing I like about Battlefront kits are these joint points or pegs or vents or whatever you want to call them. They are asymmetrical. They are not the same on both sides of the tank, so it's impossible to put the wrong track assembly on the wrong side of the hull, which I appreciate because that's totally something I would do. So a little bit of glue, of course we have dry fit these pieces first, always dry fit uh, before you actually assemble the model. And uh, there we go, the first um, set of tracks are on the side of the tank. We'll go ahead and rinse repeat on the other side of the tank. Snaps in there nice and easy. There we go. So we give it the quick little squash test to make sure that the tank will sit there level on your actual gaming table. And there we go. All right, now we're gonna put the turret back on. There's only one option for the turret back in this kit. So again, we have dry fit beforehand and with a little bit of glue, it snaps in place, smooth as butter, just like that. Okay, next we're going to put the actual main deck of the tank in place. The main deck of the tank fits on the inside of the back of the hull, and then it's going to rest on top of the sides of the hull, right where you see I'm putting glue. When it comes to the front of the hull, do not cover that entire surface, that joint surface, with glue, because the deck piece is not going to cover that whole thing, and you're going to wind up with extra glue. Now you want the deck piece to butt up against the back of the hull, right there, back where the engine is. That's why I put that piece on there first. It sort of guides where the main deck piece is going to rest. So you want a nice smooth joint point there at the back. Now when it comes to the front, this is the part I didn't want you to cover with glue. You are going to have this little bit of an underbite. That's okay, that's intentional, because then you're going to put the front part of your hull on, your little glacis plate there, and you have a couple of different options there. This is the option I'm using because it looks a little more plain, and again, I'm trying to build the very basic initial release, so to speak, of the T-62, used by Egyptian and Syrian armies during the 73 Yom Kippur War. So I have dry fitted it in place there, and you want that nice, sharp, prow there at the very front of your tank. All right, so I have now put together the whole hull with one exception. There is this additional piece that fits right in there like that, that completes the top of the hull, and that is where your turret is eventually going to join into your tank. I think they designed it this way because there is some great design there on the sides, the running board, so to speak, of, the, of your hull and it wasn't going to be you know easy to um, have the mold actually incorporate that detail so this is an extra piece you will have to clean it quite a bit to make it fit in there super flush you want that to look like one flush piece as close as possible and yeah there is our hull more or less put together at least until we get to the side skirts that are going to sit partially over top of the tracks 
Okay, moving on to the turret, we have the turret base and the peg that allows the turret to rotate. Now I guess this part is kind of optional if you choose to magnetize your tank instead of using the peg. I just always use the peg, it's definitely good enough. The one thing you want to be careful here is not to use too much glue. So you put a little bit of glue there in the center of your turret base and then the peg sits in there like that. If you use too much glue, like I've done in the past, what winds up happening is the excess glue sort of spills out, and then when you fix your turret to the hole, that excess glue will lock your turret in place and it no longer rotates, thus defeating the whole purpose of the peg. So you just want to be um, clean, you want to be careful when you're putting that peg into your turret base. When it comes to fixing the turret base inside your turret, again, great battlefront design, they provide you with this little notch that corresponds to this peg on the inside of your turret walls, so there's no way that you can put the kit together incorrectly. Now, the turret base will fit inside the turret wall, just like that. Again, this is one of those parts that you want to make sure you clean well and dry fit ahead of time but that's what you're looking for and again what battlefront does for you is they try to conceal the most possible join points inside the kit so even if you're not the best at putting these things together like i am the kit will forgive you and conceal as much as it can when it comes to fixing the main armament into the mantlet of the turret, the vents are deliberately designed in an asymmetrical way, again, to make it more or less impossible for you to put the gun into the turret in the wrong way. Okay, despite the odds and my general ineptitude, our tank is beginning to take general shape. What do you know? We do have a few details left. Let's go ahead and get started. The first up will be the tank commander's hatch. Yes, some of these old Soviet Cold War era tanks, the tank commander's hatch was on the left hand side of the turret. As far as the kit goes, you have two general options, whether or not the hatch will be open or closed. I'm going to build this one open because I'm going to make this tank one of my commanders. One of the very few details that you kind of have to watch out for here is on these old Warsaw pack tanks. The hatch opens forward and the general idea is that when the soviet tank commander was fighting unbuttoned which they usually didn't but even when they did the hatch would actually protect him a little bit from incoming machine gun fire or shrapnel things like that most nato tanks the hatch will either open up to the side or backwards again most warsaw pack tanks the hatch opens forward Next up comes the tank's snorkel kit, which fits onto the back of the turret. You got two little vents here, and of course the snorkel kit itself has two little spars. Now, when you cut the piece out of the sprue, you're going to see where it's not exactly symmetrical. You want that extra plastic up on top, because it's fitting on the back of a rounded turret. Now, even once you take that into account, the snorkel kit will not fit on their level it's not supposed to it's going to be coming up off the back of the turret at about a 15 degree angle kind of like that so once it's put in place and the glue is dried a little bit yeah that's what we're looking for and it's really just a tube where the tank crew would store some of the snorkel components if the tank was supposed to cross some sort of shallow water tactical obstacle the snorkel kits almost never worked but they were usually there so we include them in the model who's ready for some douchka action all right we're going to go ahead and put on our heavy machine gun again we're using the early model douchka because we're building the old school t62 and it fits right there in front of the loader's hatch believe it or not as opposed to the commander's hatch one piece of advice don't put the douchka on first put the searchlight on first so the searchlight fits right there on the right hand side of the gun barrel forward uh, a little bit closer to the gun's mantlet and the reason you want to do that is because if you put the douchka on first again it's not a disaster but you're just making your life a little bit uh, more difficult because then the douchka barrel is going to be in your way and when you're trying to fit the search line on there you're going to either knock the douchka off or jar it out of alignment something like that so word to the wise make your life a little easier put the search line on there first a little bit of glue there on the join point and uh, you might not be able to see it there there's two little bits of plastic that it sits on all right, and there is your searchlight. Awesome. Now we can put the douchka on and not cause ourselves any additional grief by, you know, the douchka barrel just is in the way. 
so a small bit of glue there and again you can use the NSV if you want the kit does come with both options the NSV is the same basic thing as, as the uh, Dushka it's just a little the, the slightly more modern version of the same basic 12.7 millimeter machine gun now as far as how you fit it in here you've got a couple options it's a round peg into a round uh, sort of a well so you can have it pointing any direction you want some people like it pointing backwards like you see in a lot of photos a lot of victory day parades a lot of May Day parades stuff like that just me personally I always like to have all the weapons of the tank pointing forward in the same direction and level with the ground and level with the tanks main deck I just think it makes the tank look a little bit more aggressive and just cooler that way. Alright, here's a close-up of that whole assembly so far. You see the searchlight and the Dushka. We're not completely done with the model, but we're getting pretty close. And again, I am going to make this tank one of my unit commanders. So I'll go to the commander sprue that comes with the kit and I will start cutting the chosen commander out of the sprue. Now clearly you get six different choices here on the sprue. I tend to almost never use the one that comes with the old school Soviet barracks cover there because again I'm building a tank in either Egyptian or Syrian service and even Soviets tended to not wear that uniform out in the field. We're going to use one of the ones where it looks like he's wearing one of your grandma's old bras on his head because let's face it that's what Soviet tank commander helmets used to look like. Alright, I also tend to use the one that is smallest or lowest down to the turret because uh, Soviets and by extension Egyptians and Syrians tended to never fight unbuttoned, even the unit commanders. So I'm going to have one unbuttoned just so I can tell for game purposes who is the actual unit commander. But uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely use the one that is lowest down in the turret, making the best cover. Uh, you can behind that hatch and yeah pretty much the smallest one available so a little bit of glue there uh, once he is cut from the sprue and cleaned put him in place again if it were kind of up to me I wouldn't have anybody unbuttoned because they never used to really fight unbuttoned but I want one with the commander for game purposes Next, we come to the smoke grenade dischargers, which I'm not going to lie, might be one of the more annoying parts of the kit, because there's no real peg or join point that shows you exactly where it goes. This is what the part looks like, and as you can see, it's very small. And what you're aiming at here is you want the grenades pointing forward and up, and where they fit in theory, is there on the right hand side of the tank turret, forward of those stowage bins, next to your loader's hatch and heavy machine gun. So let me get my big fingers out of the way there. You want them pointing something like that. Alright, so I've struggled with it a little bit now and this is where I was able to uh, get it on there. Again, right hand side of the turret, forward of the stowage bins, next to your loader's hatch and heavy machine gun, and pointing forwards and up. And at least what I like to do is to get the bottom of the smoke grenade rack to be level with the deck and with the ground so that it looks like it's there on purpose. So I'm not entirely sure if that's how it goes there on the kit, but that's how I've managed to get it on there here on my hobby table. One of the last things to add to our kit are going to be the side skirts. Uh, these obviously fit on the side of the hull and they partially cover the tracks and the running gear. Now you do get a couple different options here. You have the slightly more modern side skirts that fit onto the side of the T-62M. I will not be using those because, once again, I am building the old school T-62 that you would have seen in Egyptian and Syrian service during the 73 Yom Kippur War. Here are some T-54-55s that I previously bought and built from Battlefront. I used them for my 1991 Iraqi Desert Storm Force. So as you can see, they have a very similar look, and that's what I'm going for. All right, the hull, the back of the hull there, you see where I'm pointing, has a little tab so you can tell where the side skirt begins. It's also pretty easy to tell how the side skirt fits onto the side of the hull because the front of the side skirt has the same curve that you see there where my glue is on the front part of the hull. So a little bit of glue on there and you want to be really careful on this part because you want that to look as flush as possible. 
it's going to fit on there generally like that and there you go now you can get a little adventurous here you can cut out some of the panels or uh, you can just not put the panels on there at all you got plenty of photographs where there were no side skirts on these tanks or partial side skirts the guy was driving down the road he clipped a hedge or a stone wall and smashed a couple of panels there out of your side skirts um, here to show how the kit goes together I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on there parade ground ready when it comes to putting the side skirts onto the right hand side of your tank I did want to make a quick note of one thing you have to watch out for notice that partial notch there that's in the engine deck and in the side skirt that little port there that is the exhaust for the engine notice there are no exhaust pipes there on the back of the deck that little port there that's the exhaust and you want to make sure that that's lined up correctly when you affix the side skirts onto the right hand side of your tank now i know i said i wasn't going to use these external fuel tanks but who am i kidding of course i am if nothing else it'll give me something else to paint on the model they fit here on these four little spars that come off the back of the hole just like that and again one thing i like both of the fuel tanks are one part so you don't have to struggle with getting them you know level with each other or anything like that now some people get a little nasty when it comes to the mold lines on these external fuel tanks. I would invite these people to please remember that these things are made out of stamped sheet metal and then welded together. So the actual tanks actually have mold lines on them in real life. Now they do fit off the back of the hull there at that same general 15 degree angle. Sort of like you saw with the snorkel that came off of the back of the turret earlier in the process. All right, guys, and for better or worse, this is pretty much what our kit is going to look like. Again, the old school T-62 that you would have seen in Soviet service starting in the early 1960s, believe it or not, uh, as the name kind of suggests. And then perhaps even more significantly, these tanks were sent all over Hell's Creation later on in the 60s and into the early 70s with various Soviet allies and client states. Again, what we're going to be using it for here is going to be Egyptian and Syrian service. You did see some units like the Assad Brigade in Syrian service and the 25th Independent Tank Brigade in Egyptian service. They did fight in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. That's why I bought this kit and why I'm preparing uh, these models for tabletop use. But pretty exclusive and not very common. And here is where we wind up. Now, one thing I will have to do is I do need to clean that mold line off of the side of the main gun barrel. That mold line is not forgivable. But other than that, yeah, she's pretty much ready for priming. Again, we built the old school original T-62. The kit does come with T-62 M turret, like you see here, along with the NSV machine gun, different side skirts. Battlefront does provide you all of the parts to build either this T-62 or the more modern T-62 M. And that's where we're going to leave it for now, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Please remember to hit that notification bell. Also, please consider joining the SITREP Podcast Discord. There's an auto-accept invitation link to our Discord in the description of this video. Join the community, see what everybody's up to, and best of all, show us what's happening on your hobby table. But for now, this is a Riskini Gem with the Sit Rep Podcast. We are rounds complete for another episode. And as always, Tango Mike for watching.